Welcome to the NFL Week 13 Thursday Night Football Player Props video here with lineups. I'm your host, Jacob Wayne, joined as always by Cody Maelstrom and Will Schwartz. Got a good fun game here between the Seattle Seahawks and the Dallas Cowboys. Some significant NFC playoff implications. Just wrapped up recording our Game Picks video where we talked about the spread and the over-under, but let's get into some player prop picks here. Schwartz, I'm going to kick it to you first. What's your favorite pick? on this game all right i'm doing this one first specifically because i don't want anyone else to do it and i want this one i'm tired of you hitting all the crazy plus 2000 odds first this only on the slate that i'm gonna go long odds for this one uh we're gonna go zach charbonnet first touchdown score 900 plus 900 he kenneth walker does it doesn't look like he's gonna play or if he does be 100 percent. so that's a huge part of that here and frankly that's the only reason these odds are as short as they are his any time prop is plus 130 and i'm considering that one also but simply put 67 carries without a touchdown is way too many for him uh based on his level of play and what he's capable of which is what he has done so far i, I don't know if that bears saying and the other thing is that the cowboys they're average in the red zone they're 22nd in the league as they've given up touchdowns on 57.14 percent of opponent drives inside the 20 so I, I think that this is just good value Seahawks are going to try and get the game start I think they're going to throw a lot but they're going to try and establish the run at least early especially in the short field and I'm just thinking Charbonnet is going to finally uh break through he's he's way way overdue and I don't see why he couldn't be the first one in the game to do so don't hate it level upside shot to start the video definitely think the Cowboys are getting the board first but it's well baked into the odds so if the Seahawks do it Decent chance it is sharp, and I so don't mind it. Cody, let's go over to you. So I'll preface this. I don't really have actually any official picks. Um, I'm waiting on Kenneth Walker news. He's not confirmed out, correct? He is listed not, as doubtful. Not doubtful. confirmed, okay. but it sounds like I, I'm going to wait until I get that out um, just to maximum um, security, whatever. I'm going to go Zach Charbonnet over 12 and a half rush attempts. Now, what does scare me is I do believe this is the Cowboys game to lose, so they could fall behind early, and I might lose out on some rush attempts. But to be honest, if the Seahawks want any kind of sort of at least staying with the scoring pace, they're better off abusing the run here. Uh, that is the one lone Dallas weakness. They're 31st in rush defense success rate. So Zach Charbonnet should be in a position to at least cut the distance again on early downs. Just kind of make everyone's life easier on later downs. Just keep drives alive. Um, like I said, not an official pick. I'm going to wait on some Kenneth Walker news. Um, but that is the one pick I am looking at. I'm going to fire on when I get that confirmed out. Yeah, don't mind it. I'm going to go with the running back on the other side of the ball with Tony Pollard. My official player prop pick from this game. Got a couple other leans, but this is my official pick. And love this spot for Tony Pollard here. Starting to look like the player I think we expected this season. Pretty slow start to the year for him. But two straight games of over five yards per carry. Only two through week 10. And the explosiveness is back for him too. Third and explosive rush rate. Since week eight, according to fantasy points data, and over the last three weeks, 15 missed tackles forced, just eight total over the first nine weeks of the season. So starting to look, and you can see it on the film too, starting to look like the Tony Pollard we've all grown to love over the past few years. And I think this is a smash spot for him against the Seahawks run defense that has fallen apart. Since Uchenna and Uosu suffered a season ending injury, they've dropped from First in run defense success rate over the first eight weeks to 30th from week nine on. Not necessarily that's all, saying that's all because of Nuosu, but certainly some correlation there. But yeah, this run defense just hasn't been good lately. Since week seven, highest yards after contact per attempt allowed. And I think Pollard is just in a great spot to, to capitalize. The Cowboys are nine and a half point home favorites here. So it should be a favorable rushing game script. And the snap share hasn't gone anywhere despite his relative inefficiency at certain points this season 78 percent snap share last week seventh among all running backs so the opportunities there the talents there the matchups there love this spot for tony pollard and i think we're getting we're getting a discount here because of his he hasn't been hitting this number consistently but i definitely think that's going to change over the back half of the season and love this spot for him to do so so love tony pollard over 62 and a half rushing yards shorts let's go back over to you yeah, I'm not going to directly fade that, but my picks definitely correlated against that one in a way. We're going to go Dak Prescott over 280 and a half passing yards. I'm going to put this pretty simply. If the Cowboys need Dak at all, as in it's just not a blowout win, he's going to get yards. Over the past five games, he's been over 300 yards in four of those contests. The other one being an absolute blowout of the Panthers where it was just like, why are we even putting the ball in the air? There's no reason to do that. 
So it's simple. I, I, I do think the Cowboys are going to get out in front, but I don't think this is like a blowout type of situation. And frankly, their best way to move the ball, uh, as much as the Seahawks run defense has fallen apart, I think that throwing the ball is a great way for them to run offense in this matchup. Uh, it's just that simple. Dak's been playing awesome football. There's going to be opportunities. The only question to me is if they pull out uh, too far, too fast for him to get the reps he needs to get this. And my take is no. I, I mentioned earlier I'm leaning the Seahawks on the spread. So that means I think that, you know, this is going to be a competitive one all the way through. Dak's not, I mean, we're not talking about 55 pass attempts for Dak or anything, but I don't think they're going to be run, run, run only by the second half or anything like that. So if Dak gets his reps, he's playing the type of football where he's going to convert on them. So I like him over 280 and a half. It's a pretty low bar uh, based on the type of football he's been playing the past month plus. Love that. And I think people are not ready to have the conversation, but Dak Prescott's been the best quarterback in the NFL this season. He's dropped to plus 700 odds to an MVP at most books. Um, probably needs to win the division for that to happen and definitely an uphill battle in that respect because the Eagles play super light schedule over the close of the season, which we'll get into at a later point. But yeah, love Dak Prescott. First in EPA, first in success rate. Just played awesome football overall and definitely a matchup to exploit here. Cody, what else have you got for us? So yeah, like I said, I only have the one pick. Um, so whenever I uh, do that, I always like to do a nice little fun one. Will already attacked first touchdown market. This isn't as juicy as the fun ones I normally like to do. Um, but we're going to go Tony Pollard, two plus touchdowns. And to make it a little fun, I guess I'll sprinkle uh, three plus touchdowns as well. This is like uh, As Wayne said, and I was in full agreement, this is a Pollard smash spot for me. Uh, he's going to be in a great position to succeed, especially against the Seattle rush defense who st really struggles in the red zone. Uh, if you're going to maximize your opportunities, you, know, you get this whole primetime under voodoo and – yeah, they have had a full week, but I guess a holiday was in between, so maybe they kind of disrupts a little in the flow. Maybe if the Cowboys even just go slightly more conservative, it already creates a good swing towards my favor of Pollard hitting this. Let's get him back in a groove. I mean, crucial spot for them. They could still battle the Eagles for the division spot. The Eagles got a tough stretch here. Capitalize on your scoring opportunities. Give the uh, give Pollard the ball inside scoring position, and hopefully, let's cash two or three uh, touchdowns. Like I said, it's a fun one. Little little pizza money on it. Not an official play. Yep. Love that one. Um, and I actually, I'm, I'm going to make this an official play right now. Um, on Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, over 39.5 receiving yards, uh, creeping up at some places. So make sure you get the best of the number there. But, yeah, I love what I've seen from in Smith and Jigba on film lately. The rookie receivers really made more of an impact in the passing game. And he's been over this number in six of his last seven games overall. This is a great spot for him. The Cowboys have struggled to defend slots all season. Uh, Jordan Lewis, who don't want to flame too bad because he's a former Michigan player, but it's been a rough year for him. Um, he is 34th out of 35 qualified slot corners in passer rating when targeted. And yeah, they've been getting cooked by slot receivers lately. Last week, Curtis Samuel had nine catches for 100 yards. Week before that, Adam Thielen, eight catches for 74 yards. Uh, Smith and Jabed played. 75% of the snaps last week only have three targets, but he did have 41 receiving yards. Ultimately just a good spot for him because of the game script as well. Uh, the Seahawks are expected to be trailing in this one with the high over under. So great spot to target some receivers on the Seattle side of the ball. And I think Smith and Jayba could break out given the matchup here. So love his receiving yards over 39 and a half Schwartz. Anything else for you? Yeah, a couple things. One is I would like to say that if, if there's a bigger reason to invest in Jackson Smith and Jigba this week. I just caught him on two fantasy teams because I had to make space. So that dude's bound for 150 and two scores. Another thing I would like to say is, Cody, you inspired me to mess around on DraftKings a little bit. If we're talking about two or three touchdowns for Pollard, I wanted to look at what a parlay, a same game parlay, a first touchdown score, or last touchdown score would look like for Pollard. It's plus 2,700 and I found an inefficiency. If you add Pollard two or more touchdowns, it goes up to 3,100. So uh, a little something for your pizza money if you want to get a ton out of it, like a ton. But anyhow, I digress. Neither of those are my official picks. I want to stress, can't stress that enough. My next official pick uh, and the last one is going to be my special teams pick of the game. We're going to go with Jason Myers under one and a half field goals at minus 135. It's correlated with the above. The Seahawks are getting in the crib or they're not moving it at all, period. I think they're going to be able to score red zone chances. I think Charbonnet is going to be the guy to do it, hopefully. Uh, and I think this is a really good sell high on Myers. He's been over this number of one and a half made in his last three games, but he's been over just two of his previous five. 
before those last three. So this isn't like every week he's going to be ripping two, two, three, four field goals for the Seahawks. He's just been hot for a couple of games slash the Hawks have needed him for a couple of games. And I don't think this is it. I think either the Cowboys clamp them to the point where it's one of those classic Dallas shutouts, or it's just Seahawks finding the end zone. Or frankly, even if they're not finding the end zone, kind of find the end zone or die trying because they're losing by enough. The field goals might not matter. So I don't think this is much of a Myers game uh, under one and a half at minus one thirty five. It's ju- it's slightly juiced, but I think that's because it's just the side. Yep, don't mind that one at all. Uh, just those two official picks for me. So, Cody, if you want to get into your recap, and then I'll let Schwartz go next. Yeah, um, like I said, nothing official yet. Just going to wait till Walker's confirmed out, which it's looking like he's going to be. It's uh, Zach Charbonnet over twelve and a half rush attempts. And then for some pizza money, we're doing um, Tony Pollard, uh, two plus rushing touchdowns and um, three plus rushing touchdowns or not rushing, just touchdowns in general. Schwartz, what do you got? Yeah, we're going to go Zach Charbonnet, anytime touchdown at plus 130 with a smaller sprinkle on plus 900 to be the first touchdown. Dak Prescott over 285, sorry, 280.5 passing yards and Jason Myers under one and a half field goals at minus 135 odds. Yep, and I'm on Tony Pollard over 62 and a half rushing yards and Jackson Smith and Jibba over 41 and a half receiving yards. Seems to be the re- the universally available number. So I'll track it there, but we'll play up to 44 and a half um, around there. And I think it could creep up more as we get to kick off. But hope you guys enjoy this game. Hopefully we get some winners in these player prop picks for you guys. And check out our game picks video as well. We break down the spread over under any alternate props we like in this one. Hopefully we get a fun game here on Thursday Night Football. Please like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.